So I'm Olaton Dispense and I was born in Stockport. I moved away from Stockport when I was a teenager and then came back as an adult to develop some work um, as a community development worker. So I was born into a family of six, well there were already four children, I'm a twin, so there were six by the time we came along. Um, and my mum's of kind of English Lancashire heritage and my father is of Jamaican heritage. So he travelled to the UK in 1955 and I was born 10 years later. My experience of growing up isn't about somebody saw me as half this or half anything mm. or mixed anything. So I'm a black kid, black kid and the names that were called were to do with being a black kid and who I am as an adult is about being a you know very strong political activist black woman. My dad was also very political, he was a trade unions guy, he was very knowledgeable, I think his, his education was only up to he was about 12 or 13 so his, his reading wasn't great but he had a very good understanding of the world and world politics. I, I sort of found work in Manchester in areas that I felt more comfortable in um, so I ended up working as a play worker, I worked as a youth worker and I continued my role as a community development worker. So I actually worked as a community development worker in total for about 25, 30 years. Um, so when I had the chance to go to university, I studied um, community development as a practice. And it was at that same time I saw a job advertising Stockport for a community development worker. So then I came back to Stockport. Yeah, so the first thing that happened, or what the work came out of, was I had a friend, a school friend, whose daughter was being bullied in the, in the neighbourhood and in school. So she was an isolated black kid in a white family and my thought was, well, how, how do we support this family and um, what do we need to do? So I thought, well, the first thing is as a community development worker, you know, kind of build your base. So I uh, initially started to um, sort of reach out to other black parents and other white parents of black children. And we, we developed a drop-in space that was a once a month um, event where children and parents could come together and just spend time together. And if there was things that could be shared or exchanged, and that was great. Um, at that time, and it's the work that I still very much do now, I was very aware of that there are steps and stages to developing a positive black identity. So a lot of my work was around providing really positive resources, whether it was colouring materials, whether it was images, whether it was stories, but trying to find a way always to support these black children to develop a really positive identity about being black. The idea that I understand it was, you know, when it first started up, it was to kind of, um, to make people aware and to be able to contribute and to share in the black histories that were hidden histories that were not um, being, you know, printed in books that were not being shown on TV. And the, I think the idea was that if we, um, have this month or this week it was to be to celebrate these things it will become part of the curriculum that would be the natural progression it'll be just become part of the history that's told in, in in the UK or in America and I think that's what my criticism is it never became that um, and we're still sitting there and I think you know I still really value Black History Month because it's a one time thing well if there's no other time I'm going to do something or share something or read something or go to something I know that's always there as an event for me to go to um, I'm thinking about the kind of more, the bigger issues like, well, why is it only now we're saying, oh, well, Britain's been lying about its colonial past for all these years. So now, if, if, if nothing else, this is now coming into the mainstream. And I think for me, and that's a very personal view, but I think, you know, for Black History Month, we're all standing on the shoulders of the people that went before us. So whatever comes after us will hopefully always be an improvement in terms of what, where it was started and what, what are the reasons for doing that. Okay, so my understanding and the way that I think about racism is a result of race theory. Yeah, we have a theory about, that was developed by lots of people, Carl Linnaeus, there are a lot of children study in school quite a bit. He, he divided things up into species and plants and animals and blah, blah, blah. But he also decided there were categories in relation to different races. Yeah, so that was to justify white people at the top who were su su supreme and Africans at the bottom who actually weren't human. So it was kind of so justified slavery. So race ideology is based on racist ideas. Yeah. So if you look at um, some of the literature around, you know, whether or not there's any biological differences, no, there aren't. Yeah. So if we're talking about species, so if you have a donkey and you have a, and, and, uh, if, you have a if you have a horse and a donkey, yeah, there are different species. When those two come together and, and breed, they, they produce an infertile thing yeah so they actually you can't cross those so we're not different species therefore the idea of race doesn't exist so if it only exists in in the context of racist ideology if you then describe me as mixed race you're suggest, suggesting by that language there are different races and we've mixed because if somebody was german and australian nobody calls them mixed race 
They're not seen in the same way. Mixed race only applies to when you mix black with white and we have to find some way to categorize that as a group of people that are now mulatto or half breed or half caste. There's a whole lot of derogatory words. So I will not allow my children or anybody to refer to me as mixed race. I am of mixed heritage, absolutely. But we all are because we have a mum, we all have a dad who have different heritages, hopefully. Um, what is significant is I am a racialized black woman in that I am racialized by race theory, which is a racist ideology. I have two children, yeah, and I really want them to have very strong names as well. So when I was a kid growing up in Stockport, my first experience of slavery was through the program Roots. I remember the scene where he holds his daughter up under the moon, under a cardboard sky, and says, I'm going to name you the one that will stay. And he named her Kizzy. And even now when I say it, it makes my skin sort of light up. Because what I did at that time was that if ever I have a daughter, she's got to be called Kizzy. And my Kizzy is now 16. I'm, ready, well, I'm nearly 16, ready to go to college. And I have a son called Khalil which is a Muslim name, people say it's an Arabic name and the reason that he's got his name, again because I wanted him to have a very strong name and it means good friend and he's named after Khalil Gibran who's a kind of very famous uh, North African philosopher. So names are very important, I think if I want to end on anything I want to end on that, you know, and names, you know, hold our histories and are very important. Mm -hmm.